family Trichuridae, beginning with Trichuris trichura, the whipworm. The whipworm is a worldwide distribution, more in tropical areas with poor sanitation and promiscuous defecation, and also it is not present in Egypt in humans. Morphology and life cycle. The adult worm are about two, three to five centimeter long. Anterior thin part has cellular oesophagus. It is totally embedded in the mucosa of the large intestine, not small intestine like the previous nematodes. Posterior thick part contains intestine and genital system. Males are shorter and thinner than females. Also, they have a coiled posterior end with one spicule. Here is a family picture, يعني صورة عائلية للمال. This one is the male. This one is the female with straight sausage shaped posterior end and here is the egg the egg as we see has two polar mucus plugs here and on the other pole and contains one cell stage embryo inside This is the life cycle of Trichuris trichiura. It begins with the eggs coming out with feces. Then it grows in the soil into two cell stage embryo, then multiple cell stage embryo or morula stage till finally the larva develops inside the egg and becomes embryonated infective eggs. These embryonated infective eggs are taken through contaminated vegetables of contaminated water and when they reach the intestine, the eggs hatch and the larval stages develop in small intestine, then the adults attach to the mucosa of the cecum, colon, and maybe if the infection is heavy, they can reach till the rectosigmoid colon. Um, this life cycle is direct without migration in the lungs, so the lungs are not present here in the picture. Also, it looks like the development of improbious vermicularis. The eggs are barrel shaped with polar mucus plugs as we said before. They pass unembryonated from the females. Embryonation in soil takes about 10 days and infection occurs by ingesting embryonated eggs. The larvae stay in intestinal mucosa, mold and mature to juveniles, then they pass to the cecum where they attach to the mucosa and embedding their anterior ends. In heavy infections, the worms can be found in the large intestinal mucosa as far as in the rectum. Pathogenesis of Trichuris trichiura embedding of the anterior part of the worm which is about two-thirds of the worm length يعني ممكن يبقى الثين بارت ده حوالي واحد ونص سنتيمتر لاثنين سنتيمتر ثلاثة سنتيمتر embedded in the mucosa so it causes severe intestinal irritation the adults may enter the appendix causing appendicitis like in introbius. Embedding of the worms may cause anemia because the embedded part absorbs nutrients from 
the submucosa and it is of iron deficiency anemia type or nutritional anemia. Also, partly it may be pernicious anemia due to the toxins secreted by the worm. Presence of the worm in the rectum causes rectal edema and results in rectal prolapse. In this picture, this is rectal prolapse due to infection with trichuris. We see these whitish parts. They are the thick part of the worm coming out from the mucosa, and this is called coconut cake rectum. The other picture here is a cross section in the mucosa of the colon, and we see here some parts of the thick portion of the worm, cross sections also, and here is the thin part embedded in the mucosa. Symptoms of trichuriasis, light infection is asymptomatic, moderate and heavy infections, true abdominal pain, bloody or mucous diarrhea, sometimes tenismus when the worms reach the rectum. Also, there is weight loss and weakness. This looks like ulcerative colitis or inflammatory bowel disease. In case of children, they may have rectal prolapse with the worms appearing in the mucosa, what we call coconut cake rectum. Heavy infections also can cause chronic dysentery. There is marked anemia and nutritional deficiencies in heavily infected persons because the worms compete for the nutrients in the plasma in the submucosa. Diagnosis is ready by demonstration of the characteristic eggs in feces. Also, sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy may show the adult worms. This is the picture of the egg as we know. And this is a colonoscopy picture of a heavy infection with trichuris. These white parts are the thick parts of the worms. This is a male worm. This is a female worm. Also, we can see the thin embedded part in the mucosa glistening here and maybe here, if you can notice this. Um, the treatment is mebendazole or vermox is effective given daily for four days or six days in heavy infection. Also, loperamide hydrochloride or imodium is given to diarrheic patients. Now we we'll come to Capillaria philippinensis. This, in 20 years, was considered a newly introduced disease in Egypt, but it is present in the Far East from the 60s. It was recorded as an epidemic in Philippines, so they call it Capillaria philippinensis. A recently known intestinal nematode in, uh, of the Far East but it's not so recent. Uh, adults are slender, about four to five millimeter long. Habitat is in the small intestine. The adults X larvae can be found in small intestine denoting internal auto infection and hyper infection, like the case in strongyloides and the case in hymenolipis nana. The eggs are elongate with two small polar knobs. The 
here and here. Uh, one cell stage embryo is present when the egg is voided and they develop to infective eggs in water and are swallowed by fish. Human infection is from consumption of raw fish or also some birds can share in the infection as reservoirs and if they are eaten also they can cause infection to humans. Mild infections are asymptomatic and in the endemic areas, many cases are asymptomatic also, but heavy infection occurs to the immigrants or to the tourists or in the newly introduced disease, showing abdominal pain, anorexia, rapid motility with burgmai and diarrhea. Diarrhea may be severe and life-threatening with calorie deficiencies uh, or in the endemic areas, it is chronic diarrhea showing malabsorption syndrome like that of strongyloidus. Chronic cases are cachectic with abdominal distension and generalized edema due to protein calorie malnutrition. Diagnosis is by finding the eggs in feces. There is also the adults, the larvae may be present in feces in severe diarrheic cases. There is high eosinophilia and manifestations of protein losing entropathy. There is mucosal atrophy similar to that of giardiasis because the adults embed in mucosa. Treatment is mebendazole 20 milligram twice daily for 20 days or albendazole 400 milligram daily for 10 days. Trichostrongylus species, this is a cosmopolitan nematode infection of cattle and sheep, occasional man infection or accidental human infection occurring in the cattle and sheep raising areas. It is related to hookworms and the adults are similar to hookworms being having versa in the posterior end of male and also a buccal capsule of the female. The eggs are also voided in early development for cell stage embryo with thin wall, but they are pointed at one pole. This is the characteristic of these eggs. We have an idea about the disease, but the disease really is rare in Egypt. Eggs hatch in soil and larvae develop into filariform stages, but because it is an animal infection, the infection occurs by swallowing filariform larvae which crawl on vegetables in the early morning. If we have the vegetables plucked from the soil and we eat them readily, we can have the infection. Larvae don't have pulmonary migration and they attach to the mucosa and develop into adults like those of trichoris and the adults suck blood and heavy infections have anemia and emaciation. This really doesn't occur in humans because the infection is few and mild infection. We'll come to Trichinella spiralis. Trichinella spiralis is also related to family Trichoridae. The adult intestinal infection is transient and asymptomatic, but 
the larvae migrate into tissues and produce serious symptoms. The main symptoms of trichinosis, the disease, what we call it, is from the larvae. But the adult infection may pass unnoticed or cause some trivial transient diarrhea. Trichinosis is a disease of carnivorous mammals. It is worldwide in rats and pigs, and men gets infection from the pigs. Accidental infection occurs in humans consuming infected undercooked pork. Larvae exist in the intestine, penetrate into intestinal mucosa, and mold there to develop into adults within one to two days. The adult males are on the mucous surface, but the adult females burrow inside the mucosa and give rise to larvae, which pass to the circulation and insist in striated muscle fibers, also may be present in lungs, may be present in heart, may be present in liver, in the first stages. This is the life cycle of trichoris. We can see a trichinella, sorry. We can see that trichinella life cycle is mainly in between rats like this, one each another one, and the cycle goes on. Also, the larvae in the muscles of the infected rat can infect the carnivorous or the preying, the predating rat, so it is a cycle between rats. When pig eats dead rats in garbage, it gets, it gets the infection, and also men can get the infection from the incested larva present in the muscles of pork and sorry, in the uh, pork meat, and this causes human infection. The larvae are liberated in intestine, transform into male and female. They give rise to larvae which insist in human muscles and in other areas. Why does the larvae insist in muscles? This is mainly because the muscles and brain have the least immune reaction in the human body. So they can live easily without any interruption of immunity. Larvae are about 80 to 120 by 5 micromillimeter in size. They insist within sheaths of muscle fibers in a spiral manner or figure of 8. So they call spiral spiralis. This is the name spiralis because the larvae insist in a spiral manner. Inflammatory and degenerative changes occur around the larvae, gradually forming fibrous capsule around the coiled larva. These we call muscle nest or the nesting cell. Here we can see this is a compressed slide of this is a compressed slide of, from muscles and we can see the spiral manner where the larva insists here and here and this is a cross section of muscles showing cross section multiple cross sections of the larvae inside their nesting cell. This is a magnified nesting cell of muscle 
with the larva coiled inside. We see here that there are many inflammatory cells around the nesting cell because this is an immune reaction against the larvae which can cause inflammatory response. During muscle invasion, there is eosinophilia, fever in some cases, there is leukocytosis and increased serum immunoglobulin E. Also, there is myositis with pain and tenderness in the muscles. Periorbital edema can occur from affection of orbital muscles and also splinter hemorrhages in the nail due to accompanying vasculitis, which also aids in the periorbital edema. Vasculitis also can cause pneumonia, can cause myocarditis in the same patient. Sometimes there is photophobia because of vasculitis of the retina. Also, there is diplopia and visual disturbances due to affection of the muscles, orbital muscles. Also, there are other CNS manifestations like encephalitis in some cases. This can occur from myocarditis, encephalitis, or pneumonitis. There are mainly they are these are mainly due to the inflammatory vasculitis and tissue damage during larval migration in the stage but when larvae hide in muscles all these symptoms subside diagnosis is by clinical symptoms confirmation is by serological tests mainly because we can't uh, know where are the larvae and we can't demonstrate them. So, serological tests like indirect hem agglutination, indirect fluorescent antibody test or ELISA, also skin tests or Bachmann's test. This is an old test using the extract of trichinella as a skin test causing an immediate hypersensitivity reaction in the affected people. Muscle biopsy can be taken usually from the gastrocnemius or from the deltoid and to find the larvae, some of this muscle can be fed to animals which is called xenodiagnosis, means using animals for diagnosis. This is by feeding part of the muscle biopsy to the uninfected laboratory rats and examination of the rat diaphragm after 15 to 20 days for larvae. This case, we have the animal having the same life cycle as in human. This differentiates xenodiagnosis from other tests using laboratory animals like laboratory animal inoculation of the parasite. This is also another coil larva in the muscles and this as a demonstration of what we call trichinoscopy or finding the larva inside the muscle. This is a heavy infection of trichinella. One part of this slide here is enlarged. Uh, now we come to visceral larva migrants, which is the first demonstration of tissue nematodes 
we have the tissue nematodes as larval stages of some nematode and also we have the nematodes which are transmitted by arthropod vector the larval tissue nematodes the first is visceral larva migrants the visceral larva migrants is the invasion of human tissue by larvae of Tuxocara canis and Tuxocara cati or animal ascarids of dog and cat. Swallowing of embryonated eggs resulting in completing the life cycle in young animals only, but in adult animals and in men, the larvae cannot enter the lung alveoli and migrate in all tissues and parenchymatous organs like the liver, the lung, the brain, the eye, and then they insist with fibrous capsule around and may be intense inflammatory reaction. Tuxucara eggs are frequently present in playgrounds and sandboxes in gardens and in uh, clubs and the playing children are at risk of infection in these areas usually the dogs and cats defecate in these sand areas and the eggs are kept in the sand This is the life cycle of Tuxucara. Here we find that the small puppies are the only which harbor the adult male and female. The eggs come out from small puppies to infect the larger dogs and men and the, lar the larva usually migrates in muscles when a lactating mother dog gives milk to its puppies the puppies can get the infection from the mother through the larva So we don't find, really, we don't find the eggs of Tuxucara if we examine the intestinal content or the stool of an adult dog. We find it only in the small puppies. Larvae in humans don't exceed the second stage they are wandering and their wandering results in hemorrhagic tracts and infiltration with lymphocytes and eosinophils as inflammatory allergic reaction against these larvae. Ocular involvement can occur causing visual impairment because the larvae can pass their tracts on the retina. The symptoms appear more in children, especially with pika, with, who are mud eating. There is hyper eosinophilia, hepatomegaly. Eosinophils here may reach 60%. Also, there is hepatomegaly due to liver affection. Pulmonary symptoms due like Loeffler's syndrome and unilateral visual impairment in some cases. Sometimes there is epilepsy or myocarditis due to heart or brain affection. Diagnosis is based on the clinical picture, serology also, and using cultures of Tuxucara larvae as antigen. Treatment is by giving steroids for symptomatic patients. Patients at risk can also be given thiabendazole or diethylcarbamazine. 
diethyl carbamazine is a treatment of filarize. The other is cutaneous larva migrants or creeping eruption. Creeping eruption, we have discussed it in the previous lecture and we'll repeat it here. It is caused by Ankylosoma caninum and Ankylosoma brasiliense of dogs and cats. The larvae can penetrate human skin, but they don't enter the circulation, so remain migrating in the subcutaneous tissue, forming serpiginous tunnels under the skin. There is prurita scratching, which leads to secondary infection, endemic in some areas with ankylostoma infection, but not present for uh, on uh, a wide scale in Egypt, but it is present in tropical America in a wide scale or in high prevalence. Treatment is by thiabindazole orally twice daily for five or by cryofixation. This is the leg with the entry of here is the ground edge or the point of entry of the larvae. Here also is an inflammatory reaction and serpiginous tunnel from the ankylostoma brasiliense around the mouth of this patient. This is the serpiginous tunnel in the foot. And this is the adult ankylostoma caninum and brasiliense having the three teeth on each side, here and here. 